we want to add a new graph to our library of graphs that we can um, essentially graph by memory, uh, or at least you should know very closely what it looks like so you can just very quickly draw it and then use translations and reflections and all that to, to move it around the xy plane. So let's graph this one time by plotting points, but then after that we shouldn't be plotting points anymore. You should, you should internalize this graph and then use translations to to arrive at any similar graphs. Like if we want to do cube root of x minus 5 or something like that, you should know that that's a shift 5 to the right rather than trying to plot points. Okay, so we really want to get away from plotting points here, except for this one case, because it's the first time we're seeing this graph, we're going to plot points. Okay, so let's do it. Um, so here's x, right, and we'll compare that with our function f of x. That's our y value here, which is, in this case, cubed root of x. Okay, so I'm going to pick some very special values for x, because I want them to have a cubed root that actually comes out to a whole number, rather than some kind of, uh, you know, horrible, irrational number, something like that. So let's, let's be very careful with what we pick here. I'm going to do negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, and 8. Okay, do you see why I chose those numbers? Those are the only ones in this range on this graph, negative 10 to 10, that have perfect cube roots. So cube root of negative 8 is, you may recall, negative 2. Cube root of negative 1, well that's simply negative 1. Cube root of 0 is 0. Cube root of 1, we're back to 1 again. And cube root of 8, we're back to 2. Okay, so there's enough points to at least get an idea of the graph, especially once you kind of see what it looks like. You can really fill this out nicely. Let's do, um, so, so let's see, negative 8 goes to negative 2, so we're down here. Negative 1 goes to negative 1 right there. 0 goes to 0. 1 goes to 1. And then at 8, we're all the way up at 8 before we get up to 2 here. It looks something like this. Rises like this, and then it curves up through here, goes through 0, 0, and continues on up like so. Okay, there we go. So it has this kind of nice wavy property to it. There we have it. Something like that. It's increasing everywhere. That's not entirely clear from my graph, but this is always increasing. It never, it never flattens out. Mine kind of looks like it flattens out. It doesn't. It's always slightly decreasing as you go off in this direction and increasing as you go off in that direction. There you have it. Take a moment to internalize that graph, because if you see, you know, something like cube root of, you know, 5 or x minus 3, I don't know, plus 2. We'll do that in a, in a following video here. But you want to be able to just take this main graph here and pick it up and translate it around the plane. You don't want to be doing any more of these plotting points, right? So forget that we ever did that. Um, we just had to do it that one time to get the main graph. But now we're going to leave that method behind and use translations of this parent graph um, to arrive at any additional graphs that we need.